welcome all of you here, out there, around the world. This is The Big Show. I'm your host, Jerk, and how's everybody doing? You look great. Did you lose some weight? You will in the new year. I'm sure that's your resolution. This is not a mass hallucination. This is a video three days in a row. What is it, 2020? I mean, it is just us conducting interviews to a small studio audience. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll be honest, we had a guest all lined up for today, but then Ouija posted a blog and teased a new Italian bureau project, and if it's not Napoli or Venezia... So, we opted to bump them to next week as they've never been on before, and instead I'd like you to join me in welcoming a friend to the show that we haven't seen since June 6th. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming the Tech Tree Tier 7 Italian battleship, Give it up for Vittorio Veneto. Oh, I can hear you all the way over here. Jerk, you are a mad lad. If you're going to play an Italian battleship, show us the Marco Polo. Well, I plan to. But those of you who were in the last stream know that I have now maxed out both secondary commanders to 16 Legendary 4, and as such... I had that Paschetti itch this morning, and I think you're going to be glad that I did, because this one is quite the doozy. But before we get into it, let's put the commander and modules up on the big screen, and it is Paolo, Ivan, Hippie, Haruna, Matata, and as you can see, all secondaries, no accuracy, no will to rebuild. Now I know this has left some of you clutching your pearls, and others have fainted in shock. Please, someone, get them a tall glass of plum juice, and I will tell you why. Number three, the Sigma on this boat is pretty bad at 1.7. We could spec all into accuracy, but that's just polishing a turd. And as the expression goes, let's see, we gotta keep this family friendly. Uh, if you were to take four gallons of ice cream and one gallon of turds and mix them together, you got five gallons of cold turds. Number two, no will to rebuild. How is any battleship supposed to survive? Take it easy, Francis. Aside from the fact that proximity is not a skill, where I'm going in this ship, there wouldn't be anyone there to activate it anyway. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need any roads. And number one, the secondaries on this ship are no joke. They dev strike destroyers, they melt cruisers, they chip away at battleships. Now the trick to that is actually getting into a position to where they can be used. But fear not, we will. Oh yes, we will. <laughs> So first, let's talk about these guns. We've already mentioned their propensity to, how you say, avoid where you aim. Now that doesn't mean they won't do damage. They have great velocity, and I believe it was my Uncle Ben who said, Jerk, with great velocity comes great penetration. So that means you're going to need to put yourself into a spot to have a large target to aim at, and I bet you know where I'm going with this. The dreaded C word. Not that one, the C word, crossfire. If you've been paying attention, you will have noticed me dragging the red team out into the open here. They can't help it, it's like a moth to the flame. And if you've ever played this map, you know the blue team loves these islands to the north of me. It's like there is a force field holding them back. They can't get past it, but they must go to it. So we drag the red team out into a crossfire. When they overcommit, we turn back in, and now we reevaluate. And our reevaluation right now says we need to be watching our base. That uh, Those two ships over on the east side of the red, they could be sneaking back up here. And I know that my team, because this is what the team always does, is going to get to this island put all of their ships into one little square, even though there's no destroyers in this match, and just get whittled away one by one. Now, there is a downside to going with this brawling secondary build that I haven't mentioned yet, but you're witnessing it right now. My main battery firing range is only like 15 kilometers, and I use the RGA mod to be able to smoke rush destroyers, so I don't really have much concealment range to work with either, but personally, I generally like working this ship around islands, and if I'm stuck out in the open and need to get back into cover, well then that's what this exhaust smoke is for. Not that I think you've seen me use it yet. Let's just go ahead and pop it now. Puff, puff, pass. 
and we're going to turn in. Yes, we are flashing our broadside, but no one can see me unless I were to fire because this does have like a 14 kilometer smoke fire penalty. And I'm heading back to our base to support our cruisers because by God, they are defending the base. And I'm going to support teammates that play the right way. I'm using a combination of smoke and island cover right there to get a few salvos off while I reposition next to this island on my port side for cover. And once I get here, I'm gonna be able to get some big hits in on this North Carolina. Yes, that is a goddamn Wichita. We will get to that later. And so once I get up here, let's get these salvos off. I think these are gonna actually hit pretty solidly, yes. But I'm turning out again now to prepare for my showdown with the Sharn Horse. But look at that, look at that North Carolina. Is it wise to do this? I think so. We don't have too much health over there, and that North Carolina is showing me a very decent angle. So let's go one more salvo off and hope this actually nukes them into the Stone Age. And does it? Let's let's look. Look. Okay. Well, pretty pretty good hit. But look, the Sharn Horse is here right now. I need to turn out and engage with it. Uh, could it citadel me from there with its smaller guns? Maybe, but I was pretty confident that, look, I got a lot of health, and what you're gonna see me do right here is just angle and let these secondaries start chewing the Sharn Horse up. Let's just watch these numbers, man. These secondaries are just chewing up this Sharn Horse. You know, you know, they can bow into it, but these secondaries are going to be primarily hitting their uh, superstructure at this range. I know once they get a little bit closer, you'll see the secondaries are kind of like hitting their bow. But look, they are doing work. And fortunately, my team is doing some work too. They're all paying attention and we are focus firing the Sharn Horse down. Um, are they going to try and torp? Maybe. They're starting to do this turn. But you know what? It's not going to matter because my teammates, they take care of it. And that was pretty good teamwork right there. What is going on with this game and actually having teammates sometimes? So things are actually looking pretty good right now. We're actually up on ships. Uh, wait a minute. This mines does not have much health. How are my other, oh, they don't have much health either. Um, and our other cruiser does not have too much health either, okay. Maybe things aren't looking so good right now. Well, we know the last battleship remaining on the red team is the Bismarck from much earlier. Unfortunately, I'm going to start losing teammates pretty quick right here. But all things considered, I've managed to hold on to my HP a decent amount considering, uh, well, we've done 113,000 damage. Don't worry, we got plenty more to do. Uh, anyway, we're going to lose our mines like right here, and then we need to start using our HP and our brain ugh, to try and start removing some of these ships. All right, we want to isolate this mines first. I don't need to be getting spammed from every single direction by whatever cruisers are left on this red team. So yes, these shots may not be the most accurate, but they do hit hard. And these guns reload pretty quickly because this is the brawler setup. And we also know that if this mines wants to get into range to use its torpedoes, they are going to be in the 7.9 kilometer range of my sneaky, sneaky secondaries. And you know how this game goes. If you're in a German cruiser, you have to use secondaries. It is the only way. And so as this mine gets closer, Surprise, mother trucker. Here come the secondaries from hell <laughs> to start chewing it up. What's this mine supposed to do? They're, okay, they're bow in. Well, I overmatch you, and actually we get the RNG god smiling right there as we actually have a shell go through the bow, and now they are in trouble. Okay, go ahead and turn and try and get those corpse off. Perfect. And well, well, well. It's a god damn witch doll. Well, bad news. It is high noon. You are probably expecting overpins here, but if you've watched my last Vittorio Veneto video, you know that I know to shoot into the water. Shoot right, right below that water line, and you will hit the Citadel of the Wichita. See you in hell.
seriously, there are still people playing the Wichita CE in 2023. Give me a break, pal. Anyway, we've got this Bismarck left and an unknown cruiser. Uh, I wonder what it is. Oh, there we go. A New Orleans. A New Orleans who has parked themselves behind the island. And honestly, they are doing exactly what they should be doing. I've got no issues with this. They are the bottom tier cruiser in a uh, high tier match. They'll get overmatched by anything. So yeah, go ahead. Park there. You know, farm damage. Use your plane to be able to spot me and do what you can. That is the right move. But I'm not exactly looking to get farmed. So, yes, I'm using the uh, exhaust smoke right here to be able to close the distance. And my thought process is this. What is the Bismarck doing? Are they turning into Brawl? Or are they going to keep kiting? And what is the New Orleans doing? Are they going to poke out in front of me? Or are they going to reverse? You know, a New Orleans may be a lower tier ship, but they catch the broadside at close range. They can definitely put the herd on so i am thinking that the bismarck is just going to keep running but as it turns out i am mistaken as as it also turns out this new orleans plane is going to be able to spot me and the uh, bismarck is going to get a very healthy shot in on me that i'm not entirely expecting i believe it's coming any moment now ouch could have been much worse However, that dictates, all right, I have got to turn in this way and bow tank them. Well, not necessarily bow tank, but I want to catch them with a full salvo. And uh, yeah, we got to angle, you know, for their shells still. And they are in my secondary range as well. And, uh, you know, these secondaries, as we've mentioned, they're serious business. Excellently by my teammate, they are hanging back and just tossing in the DPM that they can. This is why cruisers are so important in games. They have that late game DPM to be able to assist in taking out the remainder ships. But as it were right here, uh, I'm not sure if any of their shells are actually getting there. I guess some of them are getting there, but we're going to have our guns reloaded in a moment. And that will be it for this Bismarck. And that will also be the fourth ship sunk. And we are quickly approaching 200,000 damage, which, uh, you know, pretty good in this ship. <laughs> I was kind of nervous. They were going to yoink this one, but no yoink for you. Goodbye. Now, this uh, New Orleans, uh, thank the Lord that New Orleans was not rushing me. If they had rushed me while I had to deal with that Bismarck, they could have citadeled me. But as it is, it's going to be too late for them now. They are probably going to have to switch over to HE, but as you know, I use fight fire with fire. That's going to reduce the HE damage anyway. So now all I'm trying to do is time my shots to uh, be able to sink this ship and not let my teammate yoink it. I mean, they they don't know that I'm working on a Kraken right now, or at least I hope that they don't, or them trying to yoink this would be kind of a dick move. But anyway... I'm going to uh, try and open up just a little bit. The New, uh, New Orleans can only hit me with their rear turret, so that's why I'm kind of opening up just a little bit to let my secondaries get going, and we will get some salvo off, and should this do it? Well, it's not that accurate. <laughs> but <laughs> let's watch these secondaries go and get our third close quarters medal of this match and also pick up Kraken 452 in the Vittorio Veneto. Alrighty, let's see the scoreboard and the survey says, are you kidding me? 2,822 base XP with all of that? Oh my gosh, you know what? That's not bad considering it was captured the base. Not nearly as much XP out there, so we will just go ahead and call that a very good game and a GG to everyone in it. And that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you too are ready for a high tier Italian bureau ship, give this video a like. If you think there are too many heavy cruisers at legendary tier, give the video a dislike. Questions, comments, leave them down below. And if you want to be there to see me try and catch up with all the matches I have saved, Think about hitting subscribe. Thanks for watching, folks. I will get back out there for another one, and we will talk.